What's up, you fucking hunk? <laughs> Eric Andre is enjoying some food for himself. I thought this was going to be the Sam Watterson show, the dude from uh, Law and Order. That's why he had all this food. You know, <laughs> this is, this is I was like, thing. I'm in for the long haul. We were just on open You like you fucking have worked on porn. You just have a porn <laughs> American History X kind of vibe. Thank you. Adrian's you ever curb anybody? What's curb that? Stuff. No. You ever no. curb anybody? We were, we were just talking, <laughs> like, What's this up? week on the morning show about how some black guys will not eat watermelon or, or chicken wings or anything I like that in I told Kevin, my bubbles is behind me. Mm. He goes, what is your order? I, I was, it was like egg whites, chicken wings, and watermelon. I was like, I'm a really health conscious black dude. <laughs> yeah, because why get the egg whites? Why not just get Let a Let me yolk? tell you something about both fried chicken and watermelon. They're fucking delicious. You don't have to tell me that. Yeah. You don't have mm. to tell me. Oh. Why do you go for egg whites then? I got high cholesterol. Oh, so you're watching that, but everything else is fine. I actually just, chicken wings are, as long as they're not fried, I think they're okay, right? Those are fried. Huh? They're, it's breaded and fried, the, what you're eating right now. Dude, what am I, a doctor? <laughs> Cut me some slack, bro. I'm glad that you're here, because this morning, a tweet went out. I, I said on, on the morning show that you were going to be here today, earlier this morning. Yep. And then a tweet went out uh, with some fan said something about you being ugly and now you're going to invade her radio. Oh, yeah. And you immediately responded of just like, you're also very ugly yourself. No, no, I wrote back, uh, oh, yeah, you're a real looker yourself. <laughs> but it was six... And then she wrote back right away, I love you. Oh, I was like, you really 180'd emotionally since you found out I was paying attention to my tweets. Yeah, exactly. And the minute that you responded to her, she started acting like, oh, we're just friends here yeah, and I love you. Tweet. And they they don't think you're a human being. They think they're just talking to a robot. Right. And then once you respond with human emotion, then they all get polite. Yeah. The id goes away. The consciousness speaks to them. I don't know. I think if you hate on somebody, you got to commit. Of course. You just got to... <laughs> like, if you, could say, if you hate somebody, and you start going after them, and they come back at you, you just start shitting on them more. Yeah. That's the whole point. Do you get... Bring it. Do you get a lot... Do, do you get in Twitter arguments? I get in Twitter arguments because they're kind of pointless, but, like, I'll get in, um... I usually retweet my haters. <laughs> yeah. And then once in a while, somebody's like, you're ugly. I'll look at their profile, and they're, like, hideous, zit face, pockmarked. I'm like, you ain't exactly George Clooney, dude. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I have to stop myself. First of all, it's all dudes that are saying you're ugly. Yeah, yeah. And I have to, on a regular basis, I instantly find their Instagram and start going through... And I'd say at least once to twice a week, I have to stop myself from insulting their ugly kids. Because <laughs> like, there's photos of their kids, and they usually have ugly children because they're I'm ugly like, people. You're ugly, you produced ugly. You know, <laughs> it's the way the world works. You ain't Denzel Washington, buddy. Right, right. Do you get a lot of. Hate? But Denzel Washington actually hate tweets me all the time. He does, He's right? He's like, you ugly piece of <laughs> shit. Well, that's the truth, though, because like, that's not the truth. But, I mean, if you think about it, the guys who are actually hunks, they're not like, you're ugly. They're not calling people ugly. They're like no. satisfied and fulfilled as humans they're, emotionally. They're speaking. not really worried about anything else. They're just they're, like yeah. super excited to be hunky. Yeah. Which is a term that I'm glad you brought back. Now, by the way, this is Spencer who got you all this food. Thank you. He's Chowing down. So you got, me a, you got me a Thanksgiving feast. <laughs> um, do, you get, do you get a lot of hate tweets? I get enough. It seems because what you do. I get death threats. You do you? Yeah. Do you take? Have you do when you first started getting death threats? Did you take them seriously? Yeah, you got to go to the police. You do because it's illegal. Yeah, I, I, yeah, we had to tell Adult Swim and Turner Security, and you had to go to the cops. And did you get scared by it? Yeah, fun. It's a little scary. There's so many school shooter type kids. Exactly, because now it's like this. There, there's this weird thing of this could actually happen. It's way easier to get guns and explosives than it used to be. Somebody. And, and people care about the dumbest shit now that they would actually go that far. They're like, you made a joke I didn't like. You deserve to die. Well, the stuff that you... Like, sure. Like, your your brand of humor, I would say, is, is targeted towards... School shooters. School shooters and getting them upset. <laughs> like, what's the deal with school shooters? Does it make you sit there and be like, you know what? I'm going to maybe try to annoy less people next season. No, or next not, at all. It doesn't, not at all. It doesn't it touch it your fuels, It fuels me. It does. Fuels me, yeah. Because, I mean, I think one of your biggest strengths is, uh, I mean, your lack of giving a fuck. When you're performing, 
It doesn't I'm feel in, to so, me. I'm in a heightened, a heightened state of consciousness. You are uh, off, off stage though. I'm very neurotic and and uh, anxiety ridden and, and constantly worrying about the show and my performance and stuff like that. Do you get guilty? Like if somebody, if you're just trying to do something to be funny, and you end up saying something or doing something to somebody that they're like, you know, that hurt me. I don't like that you did that to me or said that about me. Do you feel guilty about it when you're not on stage? Uh, yeah. If I, I mean, be, for me, being offensive isn't funny it's like being funny is funny it's not it's not hard to be but being mean isn't funny right it's not it's easy anybody can be mean that doesn't make i mean like uh, comedians would be out of a job if all you had to do is be mean to be funny because anybody can be mean but uh so sometimes you know you're trying to like be edgy and go right up to the line but sometimes you cross the line doing it experimenting it like if, if that stuff doesn't make it to air but i've seen things I've said in interviews in the heat of the moment I'm like ah, I shouldn't have said that but, oh because um, you can go back on, if it's your show you can go back and just nah I'm not comfortable with that we're gonna edit that out yeah sure. I mean we shoot our interviews for like an hour an hour and a half sometimes and we use like <laughs> two minutes yeah I know <laughs> just, like how do you do that though I would think like you don't get in love with the hour no not a, I hate the hour I can't watch the raw footage I have to have the editor's Metal with it a little bit before I see it, or I'll be really bummed out. And you, you could look at an hour and be like, "This is horrific. Nothing's in there." But they'll they'll pick out those two golden moments out of that hour. So that's how you do it. Like, do you plan a lot before you go into the hour? Or are you just sitting there like, "We'll have an hour. I'm gonna figure out how to fuck with this person." A little bit of both. Like we have we have like certain gags. Like we interview this porn star also Akira, and. Um, we had a teamster like fall from the rafters and bash to my <laughs> desk mid interview. Like that was planned. She didn't know it was going right. to happen. It was a prank. But um, um, that's just planned. But then I'm also you know just riffing and I'm in the moment. It's like you you got some stuff prepared, but like you figured out as you go. Like this you, is yeah, you're right well, now, yeah. It's a combination of being in the moment and spontaneous and and then having your planned stuff to fall back on. I mean, I think one of the funnest parts of the show is like. Figuring out who gets it, who doesn't, who did you actually work with ahead of time? Like, if you have a, a Jimmy Kimmel on the show, we don't work with anybody ahead of time. We're trying to rush them in and out of there. So you just kind of rush them in, then sit them down for an hour, though. Yeah. Is the studio hot for every guest, or do you just turn the heat boiling? Up? We always. <laughs> we are in the cheapest studio in North Hollywood, and they built their AC. Most studios they build their ACs so that they can run and they don't affect sound. They're like soundproof. Mm -hmm. Not ours. Our AC unit is inside the studio, so the engine is just like, and it ruins sound, so we have to cut the AC while we're rolling, and we roll for an hour and a half straight, and it just gets hotter and hotter. So that's not a gag. That's not Like, you're gag. not doing that to make people feel uncomfortable. You just have a I'm, shitty studio. Yeah, yeah, we just have a <laughs> shitty studio. I'm boiling. I'm drenched in sweat. Hannibal is sweating. But that's your commitment to the performance, because you'll destroy the set every single week in a new open, mm. but you won't spend money to renovate like where no, the air conditioning no. is. Really. I mean, we use the cheapest materials ever, too. So. <laughs> yeah, the cardboard desk. Mm -hmm. The one show when Tyler, the creator, was on and he tipped over the desk, mm -hmm. I was sure that it, the desk would have shattered by then because it's made out of like, cardboard. <laughs> yeah, paper mache. <laughs> yeah. For those that don't know, Eric Andre, he's got a show that is in reruns right now. This, this current season's over. It's called The Eric Andre Show on Adult Swim. And he's also got uh, a scripted show with Jay Baruchel. I'm pronouncing his name right, uh -huh. right? I love that dude. Uh, called Man Seeking Woman on FXX. It's on Wednesdays. Uh, Jay was in, I love, he was in Undeclared way back when. Yeah. But, you know, you probably saw him in uh, This Is The End and all these movies. Knocked um, up. Knocked up. Yeah, he's, so. It's all that Judd Apatow shit. Is it difficult? Because your whole talk show, and that's kind of what I feel like put you over biggest, is totally absurd and people who don't necessarily understand what you're doing could not trust you to actually perform <laughs> in a legitimate way you know what i mean yeah like does it does, <laughs> when you're doing the show like is there any point you know what, i got more i got more shit for i did this you know jeselnik anthony jeselnik yeah, yeah, yeah. show uh, i threw firecrackers <laughs> at tj miller on anthony jeselnik show i got more trouble for that than anything i've done on my show i think like my show is just so crazy from beginning to end right it just looks like one giant crazy blob of noise to people so who do you like having on more the the people who get it like it like the comedians or no the people it's better who just if people don't. are totally out of their element the less they know about the show the way better the interview i mean i think my favorite 
interview that's been on your show is when you had to get a guy from One Tree Hill on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he just started reading tweets, which I think were made up. Totally made up. That were just saying, <laughs> so-and-so says, yeah. you're a complete piece of yeah, shit. Yeah. What yeah. do you say to that? It's like, um, no, there's people talking shit about you on the internet. And he goes, perfect. <laughs> I'm like, there's people calling you Stephen Coletti, the human piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Coletti is dog crap. He's human feces. I'm just like ripping different like poops. And you're going for like minutes. I went for a long time. <laughs> we also had this part that we cut out just because we didn't have time. Yeah. I had a loaded gun under my desk in that whole interview. It had blanks in it, but like just as loud as regular bullets. Right. And like mid interview I'm talking to him and then I go, Oh man, there's a lot of flies in the studio. <laughs> 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 and we just didn't have time for it. Uh but uh How do you he have time? Out. Is there a specific amount of time you have to Yeah, we're, a, qu we're a quarter hour show. It's a fifteen oh. minute show. Oh, because I watch them online, so they're all kinda like within ten to twelve oh, minutes. Yeah, yeah, no. It's um uh eleven fifteen is the longest we can be. So do you ever say like you know, we got, including the man on the street stuff, we have about six hours of footage per episode. Yeah. Maybe we extend it? No, it's the perfect, it's the perfect capsule of time. Because there are, when we when we get the early cuts in from the editors, they're like 17, 18 minutes long, and they just don't feel right. It really, that, that having that like quarter hour runtime really uh, makes sure you only get the best of the best material. And yeah. it forces you to... to kill your darlings and, and get the best of the best material in there. But it's also like, I mean, I'm thinking, especially with the man on the street stuff, that some of it is, is like so intricate, but you only get 20 seconds out of it, mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. Like what they, they did, a, Hannibal Burris is on the show with you, it's like the perfect compliment. Mm -hmm. And nice. they, they did this bit where they, they got a cop car. So first of all, first of all, <laughs> the amount of government <laughs> uniforms that you guys get for your show it's like, I thought that was illegal to go around impersonating. It's barely legal. Right. I think the legal call is if people feel as if they're in danger, mm -hmm. you have to stop the bit. But as long as it's not a bit where, like, I couldn't, I couldn't dress up like a cop and run up to somebody and take out my gun and be like, freeze, I'm going to fucking murder you. Right. <laughs> like, that's not a bit we can do. Right. But as long as I'm like. Some like incompetent cop or is like in incapacitated in some way. We did this bit last year where I dressed up like a cop, hidden camera, dressed up like a cop, and went up to Harlem. I handcuffed myself around a, a light post and I dropped my pants. <laughs> so, like, my, in my underwear, I was like, Can somebody help me, please? And they're like, How did you end up like that? And I'm like, Ma'am, it's a long story. I just need, can you please pick up my pants? And, uh, uh, obviously, people didn't feel like they were in danger, so we could get away with a bit. Right. Well, yeah. yeah, because the only person, the cop had his handcuffs and his Hand pants down. And his so pants it didn't down. matter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you don't mind uh, upsetting people, whether it's a celebrity who's on your show. Like, I feel like on some level, whenever I have somebody on the show, you know, they leave and you kind of go, oh, I hope, like, I hope they liked me. Like, I hope they had a good time. Yeah. I hope you have to get into this zone where you're like, I, you know, this is a cool, it could be a cool person, could not be a cool person. But I don't care if they're friends with me when this is over. Mm. Like it, I'm just doing this for the four minutes of television on Adult Swim that it will be. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I want to the show. The my persona on the show. I'm setting out to be the most inept talk show host <laughs> of all time. So, <laughs> it's, it's not so much. I hope they realize afterwards that I was like, purposely. Incompetent, you know what I mean? Right. And I wasn't. It's not that they get the joke. Me. That they get the joke afterwards. During, I want them to be going through. Do you think hell. most of them get the joke by the end of it? I I, I don't. I'm I think not, so. I hope so. But like, did the one nobody Trino knows guy how understand what you were doing? He got out of there so fast. He was like, "Feet don't fail me now," <laughs> he and just he just pissed. like beelined out of there. <laughs> right, because like guys like that. And you had Lauren Conrad who walked off she the was show. Pissed. She was yeah, well, because in the middle of the interview, you. Vomited on your desk and then ate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's what, she didn't think that was so funny. That's what upset her. Yeah, um, that upset my mom too, and my sister. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I would Most imagine. people, it's kind of pretty upsetting. But uh, you staged a kidnapping on the show, <laughs> and this was a man on the street bit where you literally hired hard. you hired a woman. Yeah. 
And I'm assuming and it was a real baby. It was her son, yep. And you grabbed the baby and put it in a van and drove away. Drove off, yes. This guy jumped in front of the van. We didn't catch it on camera, but uh-huh. um Yeah, it's pretty uh, stressful staging a kidnapping. A yeah. hidden camera kidnapping. Because you're doing things where people want to kill you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like you're not going anywhere and you're like, Yes, I am. I'm mm-hmm. taking this baby and I'm leaving. Like, mm-hmm. And you don't I mean, on camera anyway, you really don't drop character. No. Yeah, <laughs> that was a stressful one too. Yeah. Produce, it, but thank God my producer Josh just jumps out and he's like, "We're filming a." We have the little slate. We're like, "We're filming a thing." After we're done, it's comedy. It's, it's comedy. comedy. It's, it's comedy. comedy. <laughs> but people are really upset. I, I think people were most upset. I did this one where I had a a suitcase with we we hired this contortionist woman to hide in this suitcase so her fingers and her hair were coming out of the suitcase and I was like beating the suitcase. I was like, <laughs> "Shut up! Don't say anything!" And people were like, "Then." New Yorkers came together to, <laughs> to stop you. <laughs> stop, stop this lunatic. Well, it's a very dark show. It's a dark. It's, it's very a dark, dark show. It's like a David Lynch kind of comedy. Yeah, it really is. And like a lot of the sort of uh, weird camera stuff that you do, and you do it on uh, on Man Seeking Woman as well with the just weird faces that mm-hmm. are like ugly and in strange spots, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like it's 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 very. I mean, it's dark and it's it's uncomfortable. It's it's yeah. immediately discerning to watch. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the intention, I guess. Yeah. Like, you just want this to, like, f- it's not just comedy, it's fucked up. Mm hmm. You know? Did you. We were uh, like big Gigi Allen fans at the show. We like Gigi Allen and, like, John Waters. So right. That's so our, it's just. Those are comedic influences. So eating shit is something that you guys said, <laughs> like, what, whatever we can do mm-hmm. to get as close to eating feces mm-hmm. as possible. Mm-hmm. So when Paulie D from the Jersey Shore was on your show. Uh, the bit was that you had a body double come out halfway through the interview. Mm-hmm. You introduced your next guest, Pauly D, and mm-hmm. it was somebody who didn't even look like him. Mm-hmm. Just had a bad Pauly D wig on. <laughs> but then a body double for you came out, mm-hmm. and a body double mm-hmm. for that was Andy, Andy Samberg right. was my double, and Lupe Fiasco was Hannibal's double. So, but you get to a point where Pauly D's still trying to have a good time. But I feel like the moment you lost him is when you took down. <laughs> Your pants and underwear, mm-hmm. and started uh, shaking. It's my old go-to. <laughs> and started. Bits not working. <laughs> right. Pull down. Take your, out your dick. Take out your dick and start shouting. I was born a woman. I was born a woman. <laughs> I was born a. Wo- oh yeah, I gave him the mangina. Yeah. I was born a woman. Sandberg didn't join me though. No, he didn't. <clears throat> Sandberg was like, okay, I still got some uh, Lorne Michael stuff going <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna... yeah. I think he made the right move. <laughs> Brooklyn Nine Nine's doing really well. Like. <laughs> But Lauren Michaels is a producer on Man Seeking Woman, right? Right. So, do you have a relationship with Lauren Michaels, or is it more just one of the yeah, many Yeah, me and projects? Lauren, you know, we get breakfast every morning. You do. We, we figure out, we strategize, you know, uh, what our day is going to be like. Uh, no, not really. I mean, the man uh, is very successful, and he's got his hands <laughs> in a lot of pots. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's... He's not a bad person to be associated with. Not a bad person to be associated with. He um, he is the... Uh, it's his production company that makes the show. Broadway gotcha. Video. Yeah. Did you ever want to do SNL? I did back in the day before Eric Andre's show. Yeah, I, I sent a couple of uh, audition tapes out there. I worry that some of your ideas for skits would not have made the air. Probably not. Probably yeah, not. I think I have a little more freedom on Eric Andre's show. How did you pitch that? Like, how do you get to be the guy to do that show? Because I think a lot of, if anybody's angry about it, I feel like people think that when they see you doing that stuff, they're like, well, I could do that. If they just let me have a show, I could do that. Sure. So, no, I'm not stopping you. Right, I, would, so I would tell people, to, you know, go for it. So how did you end up pitching that show, getting that show? Uh, how did I, you knew that when it, I knew it when it... Um, I knew I couldn't just go into a room and pitch it or, or give somebody a script and they'd understand it. So me and the two guys I direct the show with and Hannibal, we um, went... Uh, we rented out this little, like, abandoned bodega in, in, in like... Bed Stuy, Brooklyn, and uh, uh, we shot like a little seven-minute sizzle reel of uh, the show. Basically, like we made our own pilot, mm-hmm. and um, <clears throat> I give it to my manager, and we pass it out to all the networks. And got, everybody passed on it. You're a guy who's got to have like a team around him who's in the Eric Andre <laughs> business. Because if you just get a manager, yeah, you're like, here's yeah. what I got. Here's yeah, what yeah, I got yeah. to shop around. No, even I pitched it to my manager at the beginning, and she was like, I don't quite understand what this is. So I was like, no one's going to understand what this is. I need to shoot something myself and just show it to people. Mm-hmm. And even when I did that, people still didn't understand it. So, except for Adult Swim, like every network passed on it, except Adult Swim was like, this is great. Let's do it. Let's just try it. Yeah. 
And did they sign you to like a whole bunch of, or were they just like, you know, we're just going to put it on the air and see if it works? Well, they did like an official pilot and then, uh, yeah, then they picked up 10 episodes. Um, Are you still, are you going to do another season? I hope so. I think so. I, uh, we will, nothing, nothing as of yet. Because it feels like, uh, it feels like that's one of those things that like, you know, shows like this, uh, get into this thing where people become so aware of them. Yeah. That you can't pull it off anymore. Yeah, I don't think we're in that zone yet. Um, It's going to be trickier, but uh, I think there's ways around it. Also, if you think about it, think about Sasha Baron Cohen. Like, Borat Borat was huge, huge, huge success, right? Grossed over $100 million. He did, so super famous after that, but then he did an entire another movie. He did Bruno right. a couple years after that. Right. No problem. And Because he, he looked so different and he behaved so different as those two characters. They were so distinct. Nobody that was looking at Bruno in the face was like, hey, is that the Borat guy? I mean, some people that knew Ali G show, but he wasn't. He was going to Kansas. Right. And like Bible Belt type of towns and so stuff I, like that. Or I like guess the Middle East. So. As long There's as a way to get around it. As long as you look like this day to day mm-hmm. and keep flat ironing your hair for the show, <laughs> that's the character. When did you decide to flat iron? Like, we the, joked like around. Williams. Yeah, I, 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 it wasn't even flat iron. I chemically straightened it. I uh, permed it. Um, we were joking around year after year about me doing my hair like Cat Williams for a season and then we got to the beginning of season three I was like I totally want to do it my hair's long enough right and, and you just uh, did it it felt luxurious when you go do you, it's do a you lot do, of maintenance do you do stand up too yeah I mean I know you best from the show so when you go on stage do people have the expectation of you're going to be the shitty guy doing the monologues on the Eric Andre show uh, no I don't they I don't it. know what people's expectations are I don't think so I think they get it and if people, when you come to do... When you see Zach Galifianakis do Between Two Ferns, right. you know that when he, if you saw him do stand-up, he would, some of that would filter in that kind of, like, persona, but, like, you know that there's, there's a real guy inside of that. And what about when you do interviews like this? Do Generally, do people understand that they're just having a conversation with a human being, or do they know, like, you're the stupid interview guy, so I'm going to try to out-stupid interview uh, you? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I think it's case by case. Well, here's a gun. I'm going to shoot <laughs> That's a, Real quick. You gave you, me the death threat. They were one of my first death threats. <laughs> That's right. Um, I think when you were doing, a, you did a bit called Bird Up. Yeah. Where you wore a, a green screen, full body spandex suit, and you told everybody not to worry about you because you were going to get green screened <laughs> out. And then you just humped people for the most <laughs> yeah, part. It's, but, the, it's the worst show on television. It's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> but... Tell me if this was set up or if this was a real thing. You did one bit where you said, okay, me and this other guy, this guy you've on the show theoretically found on the street, are going to jump out of a corner and scare totally somebody. Totally real. Okay, because what happened was the two of them jumped out of a corner to scare somebody, and the guy took a gun out and shot Eric Andre yeah. to we death in front of We almost didn't do that, but there was an ethical call where we were like, are we like sociopathic sadists for doing this bit? We did it. We we got this guy. We wanted like a really flamboyant guy to have like a big reaction. Okay. So we got like the gayest guy we could find, and um, yeah, we told him um, we're doing a bit called Street Goofs. We're gonna jump out and surprise the next guy who walks by. <laughs> but we hired the next guy who walked by. We gave him a gun full of blanks, and we put squibs on my. Chest and, and he, Street Goose is the un- worst <laughs> name for, a, <laughs> for a, and it's like the terrible. lamest, <laughs> the lamest idea for a segment till we jump out <laughs> the cor- around, around the corner and scare people. Is the like most creatively lazy bit of all time. So um, yeah, we loaded his gun with blanks and. Um, put squibs all over my chest and uh, he unloaded into my torso and the guy thought it was real for you know probably five six seconds but what a fucking asshole you would be <laughs> if you had like a brandon lee type mishap where this we were just I doing know. street goofs and I we shot him to death it. by mistake i would totally <laughs> deserve to die that moment well listen one of these days i'm sure that's gonna happen so enjoy one of these days enjoy eric andre while you can now while i'm alive yeah you can uh, all the shows that we were talking about are all online so you can mm. find them there on adult swim they're rerunning all the time but Watch Man Seeking Woman uh, Wednesdays on FXX, Eric Andre, Jay Berchel. It's a very, very funny show, and it's in the same kind of vein of humor. Absurdist. Absurdist. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it's acid al- trip. Alarming, acid alarming, trip. Alarming. Dark. Disturbing. Yeah, it's good. It's bothersome. good shit. It's a very bothersome. I want two very bothersome shows. And it's ballsy. 
Because most people don't do bothersome. They try to be like, no, we want to make as many people happy. They want to be like Ryan Seacrest. I'm trying to fucking live. You feel me, black boy? <laughs> well, listen, I hope you heard that, Ryan Seacrest. Eric Andre, you enjoy your I'm ready food. for you, Seacrest. I'm then, ready to receive you. My asshole's are wide open. <laughs> All right, that's not what you do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, I want you to give me a pink sock. Okay. That's, a prolapse anus. No, I know what a pink Here's sock Here's my is. security detail behind me. They're going to rough you up a little bit. <laughs> and then force I him like to, to watch. <laughs> I want Ryan Seacrest to fuck me in the ass, right. pull his dick out, prolapse my anus, uh -huh. and then I want him to suck off my pink sock. <laughs> you heard it here first. That's right. I thought it was a physical thrill, but <laughs> it turned into something completely different. I'm in love. I got Valentine's Day fever for you, Seacrest. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Eric Andre. Uh, Mike Cannon's going to be here next. Stay tuned. A lot more Sam Roberts. Mike show. Cannon! Still to come. <laughs> That's your soundbite, right?